You are now at the round table with Lenny S. Maya the Brazilian Air and the Big Life. Okay, everybody, on with the show. Take a seat and tune in. What's up, everybody? This is Donnie Clank from Making a Band for Bad Boys New Solo Artists. And right now, I'm chilling here live at the round table with my man Lenny S. The very sexy Maya the B. And my dude Big Light right here on Rocky TV. Don't shoot that screen. Don't shoot Yeah. Step on the pedal, cause the Bentley has arrived in the building. It's the flyest crew in the game. It's the round table, baby. And we back for another hot show. Right. And we're bad up here tonight because we have one of the baddest boys of bad boy. I guess a lot of girls in here like him because we had a huge clamor going on over there. People started taking pictures and stuff. He came out, disrupted our whole intro. Nah, that was for Jeff Rock. turned the camera around and left yeah. us bare naked up here. I mean, <laughs> it's all good. All right, so Donnie Clang is in the building. Donnie Clang. Bad boy in the building. Solo. Wow, look at this. My dizzle. Yeah. We could get that. That's I ain't going to lie, you came out like one of them Backstreet type dudes. Like, <laughs> I am the star, nigga, what? <laughs> Solo. No, you Solo. definitely. Donnie, what's up, man? Chilling, man. How's it I want to thank you for coming. No you have a busy schedule. No problem. Yes. Finally, Appreciate you know, we've been like actually waiting for you for like a couple months yeah. now. Really? Three yeah. or four months. But you're I'm always doing sorry. something. Don't worry, man. We're a bullshit show. Don't no, we worry. love. <laughs> That's what no. Jay says. Anyway, um, but yeah, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, you definitely no possess that star quality. Thank Commanded you. all the attention of the ladies in the room, that's I, for sure. The backstreet thing isn't that bad, though. No, that's a great thing. I think they sold a lot of records. Yeah, Superstars. so yeah, if you could do that. It works. That was crazy. Yeah, whatever works. Whatever cool. works. <laughs> all right, so let's add, I, I, this is a question that I would always want to ask, but you coming from the whole making the band uh, generation and you being the, the one that was picked to go solo, is that extra pressure when you're around the other, the other two bands? I mean, yeah, yeah and no, because sometimes it's, it's pressure just because I'm by myself out right. on the road and I have, like, nobody. But now, like, I got to the point I brought my boy. He's, like, 6'6", six, six, so he works security. So you don't figure shit out, did you? Yeah. Yes. Big I figured boy. out ways to get around it. Yeah, so it's right. like I bring my boy, so it's kind of right. like I have them. They come into radio stations, and we just goof on them right. in the interviews. So it's like I got a group with me. But then, like, there's the times, like, I used to sing in groups. So the whole harmony thing, like, I grew up on all those early 90s groups that sing a cappella. So right. I kind of miss that whole part of it, but... Okay. Do you do you feel sorry for the ones you left behind? Not Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> not in the not in the not having to split it way. Exactly, <laughs> you have to share the royalties. Yeah, that's no. right. Yeah. That's right. So, how did it start for you? What made you want to become in this business? Um. Well, like I said, I grew up on the early '90s R&B groups, and then even like the whole Backstreet Boy and Sync thing. My sisters have the DVDs, and I would see the pandemonium they would right. cause, and right. even like like we. My my old group opened up for B2K, and well, we your, just we saw how crazy it got for them, and we right. I was just like that put it over the top. I was like, this is, needs to be something that I do because that's just crazy that you could move that crowd of people with that kind of like just from music. That's why, so I just had to do it. How, how shocked were you when Diddy told you that you weren't a part of the group, but then he wanted you as a solo artist? Oh my artist. god, dude, that was like that was the craziest night of my life. Like that was just because first of all, that was the first time I played piano live. For anybody, wow. I never even played piano before. I just know <laughs> I know how to play chords, so right. I just sat down. So that was that. And then we had five million people tuned in. Times Square was like packed. It was like a seat. It was like wow. what I saw in the DVDs. It was like I got to live it out that night. And then Diddy made the group, and I was like, God damn, I just got cut live on TV. <laughs> So that was like that was that moment, and right. then when he said you're a solo artist on Bad Boy, especially Bad Boy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Just, my old groups used to say Bad Boy on our tracks and right. hope to not get sued, and we would find <laughs> acapella of like a Biggie acapella or a Diddy acapella and try to make it fit with our tracks. So right. it was like it was crazy. It's crazy. So let me ask you this. Did he ever send you, like, you know, when he gave you that deal, did he send you a couple of shorties over, you know, like this? <laughs> <laughs> to take care of you real quick? I mean, we, we ended up he going. He sent you Danny The K way your eyes lit up yeah, just He now. sent us Danny K. Yeah, my eyes lit up. That yeah, probably set it up, off. Dog. You like no you getting around something. that. <laughs> wow. All right, you nah. know, what was the, okay, because a lot of these reality shows, you hear about the stories afterwards, like they didn't get the deal or they didn't get the money or whatever. What was the first thing Diddy did for you when the, you know, you were chosen and the show was, you know, over. Well, I mean, he's still about about work and seeing what you could do as an artist. So it was kind of like that night we celebrated. We went out to a few clubs and stuff. But after that, it was it, he wanted to see where I was going to go as an artist. Because, right. like, producers, songwriters, they were getting stuff ready for 
he, they knew he was putting together a male R&B group, and they knew Danny K was coming back out. So for me, they didn't have like material prepared for me. So it was just like he wanted to see where I was gonna go first and foremost before he started giving me like this and that. But I ended up writing like on every track on my album. Really? Yeah. I was gonna ask you how much freedom did you have with working with um, working on the album? Actually, I had a, I had a lot just because just because of that. Like the producers, the writers, they weren't ready for for me. Like Justin wasn't working on the album, which was probably the closest thing to what I was coming out with. So they, they just didn't have any material. Already, so I just went. I started writing, writing my ass off, like just. Were like, you able to pick producers that you wanted to work? As yeah. To what, yeah, I, I threw out a few that I wanted to, and then of course he has like Mario Wine and Brian Cox, so I got to work with like crazy producers, and they knew I write too, so it was, it was just. A you blessing. were go with them? Oh yeah, yeah. I learned a lot too, like just just being around them and being even around like the writers that have written stuff for for huge artists like Britney Spears. This one writer, Corte. I wrote a lot with him, and I just I was learning so much not only just about about how his style is, but how to make it work with my style, and it was just it was a whole learning What's experience. What's the most valuable lesson you learned after being a rec signed recording artist, as opposed to like doing demos? Well, I learned more lessons before, as like trying to grind, trying to make it. Like a lot of people are like, oh, you're not making a band. You had the easy way in, and I'm like, no, like really, my old groups, we had deals on the table. We were signed with this manager, that manager that right. promised us the world. Like like people that are coming up, you know what I'm talking about, because you you get the these broken promises that just break your heart because you're work out there working ten times harder than people that are in the industry and you're just really just trying to get the deal and then once you get the deal that that's when even more work begins so for like if you're just up and coming just keep on grinding because you right. never know what could happen and even if it's a reality show or whatever just take it take the way in right. if it's a way in take it and well on that in. note we're gonna take it to the top of the we mountain are. like you are with Puffy yeah. we are the round table we'll be back we live New York City don't shrink that screen yes and it's on and popping baby right.